Good morning from Miami. This is Dr. John Bennett, broadcasting for internetmedicine.com, uh, the orthopedic section. Today we have the pleasure of having Young Lei Moon, MD, a neuro, excuse me, a orthopedist from uh, Korea, who's an expert in 3D printing. And we're also joined by a late arriving guest, Dave Doherty, surprise, uh, M Health expert from uh, from the uh, British Isles. First, we'll introduce David before we start, we turn it over to Young. Hello, David. How are you, John? Hello, Young. Yes, I'm looking forward to pressing on with this. This is gonna be uh, very interesting. A lot of um, patients really get wowed when doctors use really cool technology, and some of the doctors that we run education courses for um, just love to see this stuff, because I think patients are so used to technology in their normal lives, when they go to the doc doctor and the doctor pulls out an old thumb copy of a textbook that was probably printed 10, five, 10 years ago, it doesn't give that good impression. And a lot of patients today, um, doctors are telling me, are judged in their, um, you know, the currency the, uh, of their medical knowledge by their use of consumer technology. You know, so if the doctor doesn't know how to use iPads and augmented reality, and they're using that in their day-to-day -day life, they might think, hey, the doctor's not keeping current on these things. It's kind of inspiring. And what I find is young doctors need to make a real wow impact on patients. When senior doctors even do very basic, sim simple things, they get an incredible response. So. Okay, um, I'm hey, Dave, Dave, well, uh, sir, Dave, Dave is a big expert in M Health, uh, and uh, you hope you can post about this show on, on your uh, Twitter account so people, I just have people the, can see, I just uh, have more people can see, see Young, because uh, Dave's a late arrival to this, uh, to this mm -hmm. point. Okay, I'd like to introduce uh, Young Lay Moon. Um, it's all yours. Yes, I am Moon from Korea, so nice to see you, John and David. So I am, I do the medical practice. Also, I am the research for the technical point of medical simulation and 3D printing together with ISO and IEEE. So I am very, it is great, great pleasure to uh, introducing my, uh, the research point together. I can, I, I want, really want to have I really want uh, uh, sharing my idea all together with you and let's uh, take uh, the, the match point for the next, the future technology. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Okay, uh, you're gonna go into a, a formal PowerPoint presentation? Yes, I will. Yeah, let me get, uh, well, I'll ask you the questions after you do your presentation. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's from, very you, good. Okay. okay, it's yeah. good. Good evening from Korea. My talk yes, is yes. about okay. medical 3D based application, not only 3D printing, but also simulation and standardization issue. Yes, I will divide it into my talk three parts. First, I will touch medical simulation and 3D printing. Finally, I will sharing my idea and technology about standard. When we watch the patient, my curious point is what happened inside of human body during our the patient exam or the uh, some surgery, I can see only surface of a human body. So if we add this virtual or augmented reality, finally we can figure out what is happening inside of human structures. Recently, I'm working together with Erasmus Plus, Plus project, which is supported by European uh, educational pro project, together with Turkey and Greece and Italy and Czech Republic. Then we can produce lots of product 
about the issue of teaching virtual reality based teaching of medical student and the junior doctors so we are going to finalize such a product for how to make efficient tutorials for the student and the junior doctors when i was staying in the united states i had did lots of these cadaver works so but the problem of this cadaver work is each cadaver has a different the condition the length is different and size is different and gender is different age is different so it is very hard to figure out whether it is really normal or the cadaver is not moving joint moving moving the the object so i produce this product from this ct or mri so when i met some my my colleagues their complaint is they cannot understand this ct or mri grayscale data so that's why i produce somewhat more interactive structure from the 3d model merge it together with the 3d models and the ct data then the, my colleague not medical non-medical the practitioner the, the the person they can understand more easy way yes this is more dynamic structure which we can show inside of the structure and it, it is more realistic something like uh, the looks like living material for watching the patient inside of structure and the student and junior doctor they cannot make segmentation in between each the muscles or neurovascular structures so if you produce this kind of the 3d based simulator they can their the learning is getting more the, the easy way yes however this structure is very very fine material with very uh, extreme texture inside so for produce this pro product we takes several days however my 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 friend they when they need to the simulation before the patient surgery they cannot wait few days if it is urgent or emergency case so then my next product is most something simplified simulator for watching inside and viewing inside and the simulating and surgery inside by this more simplified simplified product than this this the extreme texture version there are four kind of simulation the simple mechanical and the standard patient and virtual scenario yes when i was a resident a junior doctor i utilized this mannequin structure however it's clearly non realistic i cannot even though i can see inside of the human uh, joint but it is not so realistic that's why i am looking for the some product which is contain some normal or the injured the tissue inside so that's why my way of the simulation is producing the multi user based realistic structure for watching the patient or virtual patient the, the joint or the injured portion or normal the condition more something realistic way so we can share the scenario and the anatomy and pathology and virtual patient together with expert and junior persons yes when we add this camera inside of the patient the augmented re augmented reality based uh, camera into patient the shoulder then we can figure out the, the anatomy structure even the pathology structure following the patient condition based on the mri and ct yes this is project together with the guangzhou china this is the 
some kind of deformity of the knee, which is more in the inverted knee. So we need to the, uh, correct this bone from the femur side because this lady, the, 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 the deformity is more serious than the other condition. And we, when we performing this osteotomy, we can produce and simulate the product before from the CT data, where is the cutting point? We can produce cut cutting point from the, uh, the, the medial or lateral. And we, we, we made a plan and the angle. Then we can produce which angle can correct the patient deformities. Yes. If we following this the, the plan, then we can figure out which plan would be the better, the correction angle for the patient, the deformity corrections. Yes, when we after we made uh, this the, the angle, then we can figure out the drawing through or uh, uh, the design of the surgical cutting guide. Then we can make translucent. Then we can uh, make a cutting guide for the knee knee correction or femur correction. So this is not only the simulation but also 3D printed material for patient surgeries. Yeah, after this the surgery, the patient obtained the correct the angles. Yes. After our simulation, we require 3D printing. So for the orthopedic part, this is normal shoulder. So even such a normal shoulder is educational for the student and the patient and young doctors. So you should know which is normal. And after that, we can figure out the, what, what is the problem. For the 3D printing process in medical field, we, we need to obtain the data from the CT, MRI, other sectional based the images. Then CT has a, some advantage. It, it contains lots of bone data, but the, some uh, sub-tissue data is a little noisy. So we require some manual work from the uh, 3D special specific uh, designers. Then we can, uh, some designer eliminate some noise and some process of the more accurate model. After that, we can choose some material such as metal or plastic, or even though we can add uh, some the cell for the covering some the defected point. Finally, we, the, our final point would be, would be bioprinting. Then we can put this implant into human body or just watching the 3D printed material before the surgery plan. Yes, this is planning material. This is a 16-year-old boy who had the bone tumor. So the patient bone tumor contained lots of a little huge amount of bone tumor nearby the nerve and the neurovascular structure. So I produce print both the vessels and the tumor simultaneously. We can arrange and we could figure out which way of cutting would be avoid complication to cutting the nerve or vessel for the safe surgeries. So Finally, we can, this artery is a little, a little kinked at this point. So 
my cutting angle, cutting point is start from here to here and cut it and uh, a little twist it. And finally, I, I was away from the complication of the artery and nerve injuries. This is 56 year old gentleman who has septic shoulder, not only septic shoulder, septic, sepsis is not only located in, the, in his shoulder, also the, he is bacteremia patient because his condition is not so good. The, my infectious the specialist asked me to the cutting, to eliminate this the infect, infected source, if not, patient is going to lose uh, his life. So I need to cut his shoulder, the humerus, the following more anatomic point. And I use the mold printing for, by the reverse engineering. This is CT from the humerus, and I do reverse engineering for make mold for bone cement contain antibiotics. Cement spacer. More realistic, anatomic, the human joint rather than other artificial joint product. Yes, so I produce this real, uh, realistic mold and we can figure out clearly matched together with our mold system from the, the 3D printing company, then we can produce more same similar angle, maybe uh, three months after he is replaced into the permanent uh, implant. Yes, I, I produce similar stem, a similar angle and the similar size of the humerus, then patient compliance is quite good. And after that, the patient obtained after this surgery, patient do not want to replace is this cement into permanent implant. Why? The patient compliance is quite good. Then he do not want, he is feeling comfortable only with this cement. However, I, do, I don't want cement toxicity after uh, this, the cement is going to loosening or make uh, some particle. So I explain, I change the patient the mind, then I can replace the permanent implant after uh, three months after the surgeries. After, fortunately, patient obtained the quite the patient uh, the infectious condition is going well. Let's move into more something serious condition: bone cancer. Yes, this is uh, the. Yes, this is osteosarcoma. As, as you know, uh, we need to uh, figure out which amount, which amount of cutting is available or uh, efficient for wide excision. So uh, we can figure out the normal and abnormal side. So we can figure out from here to here would be wide excision. And when we decide this surgery, we are talking together with the neuromuscular, the, the radiology uh, musculoskeletal uh, radiology specialist, also working together with tumor surgeons. And finally, we can decide which is the point of excision of the bone. And before we do surgery, so we are something teamwork and we can produce this guide system, which amount of cutting is efficient for the replacing other allograft and the match together with new implant. And before we performing the surgery, we produce this the model from the, the, the 3D implant, then we can the, the simulate before the surgery how much the length is proper for keeping stability after this large amount of bone excisions. Yes, we do simulation before the knee reconstruction. Then this is yellow bone. This is maybe covering with the real bone. And finally, we can 
the something maker some 3D based simulation simulating process. After that, we can decide the next process. Yes, this is excision of tumor, and this is yellow bone, and put this implant into the, the rear bone and covering the allos and synthetic structures. Yes, this is post-op condition, and uh, this is your process your, during the rehabilitation. And the one week after surgery, two year, four year after surgery, the patient, fortunately, the patient is still alive and she is very good condition and won't unite in, well in united condition after the, this surgery. The major issue was the proper amount of oxygen is based on the 3D uh, simulation and the 3D printing of the guide is rescuing is the uh, serious condition. Let's move into spine surgery. I'm working not only working together with my domestic partners, I'm working together with uh, China and Japan and Taiwan. This is product from the Taiwan. This is uh, the, the banded spine, the so-called scoliosis. And you can produce this the material from the 3D material from the CT scan, then you can figure out the which the segment is the, the yes is the, the bandit or and as you know, scoliosis scoliosis surgery we require many many the screws. If have a, some just one screw have a, some problem, the patient the result is um, cannot promising. So. We can figure out which location of screw is safe for each the, the segment. So after the volumetric rendering, then we can figure out which we, we usually simulating the screw point following the 3D based images. Somebody asked me one question about this issue. We take a CT from the spine position, but surgery is take at the perform during by the, uh, the front position. So, but however, each anatomic landmark of the transverse process and the pro, uh, and the, the the some kind of some. Some the anatomic landmark of each spine is quite similar in between. So we can eliminate such a uh, position de de based difference. And we can produce, that's why we produce the each segment based guide, guide system. So following the transverse process and the spinous process, then you can produce each guide system following each segment and we also print the, the three print three uh, the seat the spine then we can simulate whether it is well available well the match together with the real the pedicle point then we can do real surgery yes finally patient can obtain the correct spine yes my final issue is application-based standard. Most promising standard technology in 3D printing is aerospace, automotive, and medical. Medical is at least second position in this three field. So, but why we require standard? I obtained this real human bone CT. Then I made a, a 3D model to less, lots of 3D printing companies. But result material, printed material is like this different the date result. Why? It is depend on the uh, G code. It means software which is 
transfer to the software, the 3D printer, then each Z code have uh, some error during the process of 3D printing. Also, uh, during the, the proce process of 3D printing process, it is merged together and is a little shrink or something kind, some kind of uh, deformity during the process of stacking from, from base to the top. That's why the result is quite different sometimes. So when, but for the medical practitioner, practitioner, we require in orthopedic field, we require at least one millimeter of bias. In dental field, we require less than 1.0 and 0 0.1 millimeters of bias. So that's why we should reduce the bias by the, this standard issue. I'm working together with IEEE and ISO T261. Uh, I'm the convener and chair of the medical 3D modeling and visualization and data management for patient data require some privacy and the, the compress and the data transfer need to some standard. And finally, simulation and printing. Before we start this kind of process, we need to obtain the normal data from my country in Japan and China and other European countries. My issue of standard is 3D printing for bone and muscle and other the solid organ and surgical guide system, implant system. Finally, we can go into the biomaterial. Before, beside, before we did, did we performing this 3D printing issue, we need to finalize simulation by the software or monitor based or some kind of uh, the, the virtual reality based surgical simulation or patient simulation, simulation would be so helpful for teaching the students, also the surgeons, the preoperative planning. This is summarized the picture which I'm doing together with ISO and IEEE. I do obtain the CT or MRI from the, uh, C, obtain the image data from sectional images then performing the 3D modeling and we add some texture and color for making more realistic bone or tissue or organ. Then we, we, put, we can do moving into data management for this surgeon or this practitioner or other implant company for produce new implant. Finally, our the product would be simulation for the practitioner or the, some simulator for diagnosis or educational or surgical preoperative planning material Finally, we can apply this 3D material into the human patient's body or the, the other teaching materials. Yes, I am working together with IEEE and United States FDA and Korean FDA and ISO 2261, which is regarding uh, the medical 3D printing. And for simulation, I'm working together with European, European the, the teaching project, the Mediterranean 3D model scheme, then, then finally we can obtain the more safe and useful material for opening the, our market. So in medical part, we can produce new technology for the future patient care. But before we start the, in the opening the market, we are working together with the FDA and Standard Association for produce more standard technique and the safety issue, safety, 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 safety material for patient application. After that, the medical practitioner can open the medical safety market together with other the device company and other the, the practitioners. That's all. Thank you. Okay, very good, excellent, excellent, uh, uh, Young. Okay, I have a few general questions. Now to get off the screen share, just go to the top of the screen and okay. click, click on the stop share. So, okay. we can see your, so we can, Dave and I can see your face. 
Okay. Sure. There you go. Uh, uh, yeah, excellent. Great, great diagrams. And, you know, I do most of my um, online work with neurosurgery. I've kind of lost contact with what's going on in orthopedics. A lot of exciting stuff going on in orthopedics. Now, the, um, the standards, were they imposed because of medical reasons or legal reasons? Uh, yes, we are still, uh, our standard is looking for medical technology standard. Okay. Yes. Kind of to, to define. Other than the legal issues, yes. Okay. Uh, do you find that the orthopedic community is pretty open to these, to this new technology? Because I know I, with neurosurgeons, when there's something new, it's difficult to accept. Do you find the same in the orthopedic community that, that it's difficult to convince them to even look at it, use of this technology? John, I'm looking for a global friend because of lots of domestic the, the practitioner, they are a little more close their mind about the new technology because yeah. usually Practitioners are happy with a little conservative or the classical manner rather than new challenging pro process. Because it is sometimes a little, a little dangerous or too much expensive or sometimes not so efficient or, or not so useless. It is, it is, they think it looks useless. So I'm looking for who, ha who is more innovative mind for collaborating together. So that's why I am knocking your door of John, John's room. So then uh, because I'm, that's why I'm working together with uh, Dr. Yuri from the Turkey or other country, also uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Boneto from the Brazil, so my, my orthopedic friend in Brazil, so I am working together with a global company, global friend, for produce new challenge product, product all together. Until my colleague, is, I'm waiting, still waiting. My colleagues are open their mind to new era. Mm -hmm. That's yes. Bruno, Bruno Gabato you're referring to, right? Yes. Your Brazilian compatriot. We had him on a hangout uh, a while back. Dave, do you have any comments or questions for uh, Young? Yeah, my, my feeling on this is um, the, the market's changing very quickly because of other innovations that are happening. So things like, uh, you know, training students using the 3D for medical app um, that was pioneered at Stanford and now at University of California, San, uh, San Diego, um, Irvine. Um, and that's basically, have you seen the 3D for medical apps at all, Young? I'll say it again, please. There's a, there's a company that produced the 3D for medical apps. Um, for the iPad. Um, it was actually used by Steve Jobs before he died as an example of how the iPad was going to revolutionize um, the education, med medical education. And basically, it's uh, sort of 3D uh, visualizations of, um, it's been shown on the world stage with, with Apple Keynote, but uh, 3D visualizations using the iPad of anatomy. And what it, they found is that people learn, uh, at the beginning you were talking about how you know, bringing in different people to sort of understand the cadaver issues, the variances in cadavers. And this has sort of got around a lot of those issues. And it's all, all the students who are using it are scoring much higher in their anatomy exam. So that's the first company I would say. Um, I, I'll, I'll introduce you when we're off this to uh, Dr. John Moore, who's the CEO there. Um, a fabulous company, but it's right going into the basic where you train people into a career in, in you know, in, in orthopedics right from medical school through. And I think those people are going to be so much more receptive. Um, and when orthopedic surgeons learn how to use the app with patients, if you watch them consulting, it's a completely different consultant environment. And then I think what they're going to find is that the patients are going to be expecting this secondary innovation, you know, in terms of the surgical planning and the intervention. Um, I thought well, some of the stuff you were doing also has got a huge impact with synthetic bone. Um, you know, how do you sell the synthetic bone modeling um, without this? It's kind of uh, chicken before the, the cart before the horse. And so I think you're, you're pretty much in a, in a pioneering space there. So also 
Um, here in Ireland, near me, we've got the Europe's largest synthetic bio lab. Um, it's down in Cork, and I'll introduce you there. Um, they do, they've got a synthetic bio lab, and they've got an innovation on, on synthetic bone creation, where they take um, stem cells from you, grow your bone outside the body, and then insert it back. And I mean, if you could 3D model with um, your background in that, um, I, th I think there's a huge innovation that will happen there. Also, at the beginning, I saw um, you were sort of showing how there's an educational process and a, a learning thing. And one of the areas where I find there's a lot of appetite for this and um, a lot of resources, and a lot of people want to be pioneering in research is in the equine medicine field. Um, here in Ireland, we have some of the world's most valuable horses. Um, we breed and train the, the world's best horses. And these are for the racing market, and also there's some relations there in Korea um, that we're tied up with. Um, and I think visualization is really important there because some of the most uh, critical components uh, of, of making a clinical decision are often not with the veterinarian, as you'd have in human medicine, but also with people like farriers who are really experienced with certain horses and can add really good. I mean, if some of that visualization was done with a farrier, with a vet, with an owner, um, I think you'd get quite an incredible experience um, in terms of surgical planning um, that everyone would be really excited by. And, uh, at the moment, they're producing uh, large-scale 4D scanners for four horses um, so they can do standing x-rays, and that market is absolutely taken off because of that new technological innovation. They basically couldn't x-ray animals standing up, and as a weight-bearing animal, um, it, it just limited the entire market. But as that has opened up, the amount of orthopedic innovation is just going through the roof. And, and a lot of human um, orthopedic people are, are working in that area um, because a lot of stem cell work is, is really pioneering there. Um, they can handle a little bit of the sort of concerns and you know things like FDA. They can handle some of the cancer concerns and things like that much better than human and medical insurance people can. Well, you know, Dave, there's a neurosurgeon from... Uh the Netherlands, Mark Van Land, he does 3D visualiz visualization of brain tumors that allows a patient to understand very well um, the, the extent of the tumor and allows a surgeon to explain what mm -hmm. he has to do, what he's going to do. And, yes. and that's certainly what Dr. What the Young has gone over, how important it is for both patient and the doctor to see. Uh, uh, do, uh, do doctors embrace that the educational part of of uh, 3D print of, of 3D and visualization of what's going on, Young? Yes, my final final destination would be realistic 3D simulation during the surgeries. That's my final destination. But till now, I am using this 3D visualization 3D visualization for patient and junior doctors and my colleague education mm -hmm. but in a some time I add augmented reality and mixed reality into the human body and real anatomy then we can figure out patient the very dangerous structure during my surgery and we can help avoid such a complication or figure out real problem during our practice so you're right. I'm still stay on the more a little safe area still. But in a soon time, I'm getting going going into step by step. Finally, we can the the produce new product for augmented or mixed reality product for surgeries or other dangerous surgery practice. Now, Dave, you were asking about apps. Are there any apps that show the 3D visualization and, and what, yeah. uh, doc, yeah. what Young I think, is doing? I, I, I think augmented reality is the next mass media. So we've had, you know, uh, mass media of the PC, before that the TV, before that, you know, uh, the internet there, um, before that cinema, radio. I think the next mass media that we still haven't got a clue about is augmented reality. The fortunate thing about it is before we need all these headsets and all that, we can do a lot of augmented reality on the mobile phone. And if you look at the latest iPhone generations, which have got multiple cameras co-located co on, on the sides of the phone, and um, that's allowing depth of field measurement. And so I think the reality is, you know, if, um, you know, people are, you know, young people are, are whipping their houses with flat pack furniture from Ikea, 
and they're using the IKEA app to sort of scan their room and see how a certain sofa or cupboard or bed would fit in a room. I think when that young person accompanies their parent to a, uh, or, or their child has got some orthopedic, you know, need, I think if they accompany them to the doctor and, you know, they meet their a colleague of Mr. Young's in orthopedic, what, what's going to happen there? You know, it's going to be like, well, why am I using this advanced technology to put a cupboard in my room and I'm not using it to ensure more learnings from, because I think the feedback mechanism is going to be invaluable as well. You know, mm -hmm. as you do these surgeries, the ability to progress, if you're video recording stuff and you're, you're following the outcomes, when we saw four year post, we saw some of the, the incredible outcome there on the imaging. If you can also show a lot of the, you know, the wearable sensor, the biomet, how much, uh, you know, the biomechanics were improved and advanced in this space, I think that's uh, phenomenal. And what we're seeing also is some uh, machine learning um, technologies that are essentially, you know, video recording. We've seen it a lot in the equine market at the moment. Um, video recording uh, an animal moving and then calculating biomechanics from that. Um, and I think that's invaluable because what that's going to show is much closer observation of the outcomes and therefore we can actually say what's the result of this and so for an insurer um a payer who's looking at treating a patient with a really complex scoliosis i mean immediately this is going to be so cost effective in terms of um compared to what you're currently doing plus every patient who comes after that scoliosis treatment is just going to be able to get an incredibly uh step change up in terms of in, in performance improvement and we don't get that currently. You know, we get, there's that operation, done and dusted, bye-bye. Um, actually, what we've got to be able to do in terms of predicting what works and what doesn't, we've actually got to be able to do exactly what's um, being done there in Korea and, um, and start showing, um, here's this evidence, here's why this works. Um, and, and I don't think, you know, people with um, really complex um, scoliosis here in Ireland, you know, they're not served very well by the surgical community, but why not trip to Korea? Um, it, it, it seems to be um, a very efficient way of um, of treating patients. Um, if we don't have that treatment in Ireland and we've got massive wait lists and a small amount of treatment we've got and then innovative things like this are being done, this must be incredible for Korean medical tourism. You know, I'd go there. <laughs> you know, Young, you spent a lot, a lot of your time is spent educating, correct, Young? Yes, I I spend I I enjoy lots of time for education. Yes. Okay, and you go to conferences. You speak frequently. You were saying before the show a couple times a month you go to a conference to talk to talk about what you talk about today. Yes. Yes, I enjoy lots of talking to the yes other my domestic colleagues and the students and the junior doctor and the international colleagues. So for transporting my idea and absorbing others' idea, that's my uh, the, the happy, happy point of the happy journey of my life. Oh, okay, so, and, but you're, you're, you are currently operating and incorporating some of these uh, theories and techniques into practice, correct? Yes. You're actually using them? Yes, I'm actually using it, yes. Are you, t are you televising that from the operating room or are there restrictions on that in Korea as far as uh, televising live operations? Uh, you mean tele telesurgery or? Well, no, well, just televising what you do. Uh, did you record it or do you televise it live? Ah, good, good question. Is here the, uh, the, Recording a video is not not a big problem, but we are if we something uh, if I open this video into other the colleague the Korean legal the medical regulation right. medical medical privacy uh, regulation does not allow us to open right. Right. this data into other the colleagues. Right. If patient allow me and make us some consent. Consent or, form. Yeah, consent form for something that discussed together with the senior doctor, what we doing with this teller, teller video together with the senior doctor, so supervising doctor and junior doctor. If patient is say yes, we can do. But still, right. 
is very still used, utilized in limited case only. Oh, okay. But a, but a private video probably wouldn't be too hard of a problem as long as you get patient consent. Yes. Yeah. You require have, patient consent. Yes. Have you done that or no? You haven't done any live operation videos. I uh, fortunately I had a chance to live up the, some 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 video for the patient surgery. Yes. Oh, okay. Very good. And then that, that's not accessible to us. It's just just to the the private. Yes, if you can say yes, I can do. So if maybe some, yeah, we can, John, we can talk of, talk with later. Yeah. Whether it's available or not. So we can, I can open some patient, the case, if patient say yes. Oh, or okay. Doing only patient, the, 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 the surgical location only, not whole body. Okay, very yes. good. Without name, yes. Okay, of course. Course. Just Dr. Go ahead, Dave. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, Dr. Lehman. I just wondered um, what we find is um, a colleague of mine has been giving patients their full medical records for over 30 years in the consult, and um, it's still something that isn't routinely done. Um, what we find is that patients who've got their medical records um, don't become the burden asking silly questions um, and become much more engaged in their health. When you're doing this sort of documentation and, and, and processing with patients, do you find that? You know, they stick, you know, have you ever published any data on how well they stick maybe to their rehab schedules? Because um, I imagine if I had an advanced uh, operation like this, or a knee, knee operation or something like that, I, I'd imagine that patient would expect an app to do the rehab for them. And I would also expect that patient would feel much more engaged in the process of, you know, the important work they've got to do to make sure this recovery goes well. And do you find that there's any link there? Yes, I'm using still depend on the video system, which is produced together with the, the rehab practitioners, specialist and me. I produce new video system. So fortunately, my government sponsored me for produce rehab-based virtual reality product by the HTC Bible. The, the tracker, then we can the teaching the, the shoulder shoulder exercise and elbow exercise, even the trunk exercise for obtain better result after the after my surgery. Even just something non non operative case, maybe this is available for patient the rehab care. So maybe virtual reality and augmented reality based the rehab process would be very, very promising the uh, material for patient care. So fortunately, just last week, my government sponsored me for financial support. Oh, very good. Um, one of the other people I would say to get in touch with would be the Microsoft HoloLens team. It doesn't seem you're talking with them yet. Excuse me? So Microsoft have a, a, a augmented reality product, which is a, called a HoloLens like a helmet which goes on your head with cameras on the outside and it has visual um, overlay um, and uh, one of the things I would think it would do is it would allow you to um, grab the data from the patient much quicker so if you were doing things like uh, for example um, first consultant for patient and you were looking at things like limb extension um, and then the secondary if you were doing follow up in their rehab I mean, you wouldn't have to measure stuff. The HoloLens could just do that. You as a doctor, you could just put the augmented reality on, do the manipulations to, to a regime, and you would actually have all those angles all calculated by, by the headset. It would actually be really nice because it would free your hands up mm -hmm. and it would allow you to um, dictate the, the console. And at the moment, um, you know, the demonstrations I've seen from the Microsoft HoloLens team, which is a very small, the medical unit is very small compared to the, the larger sort of, other applications, industrial and aerospace, but um, I think it, the, the applications that they're currently on are, are quite dull, quite boring, and I think you're, you'd be a great partner for them. So yes, HoloLens is a very, very nice system. However, it is a little heavy for the disabled patient, so I usually prefer the open monitor rather than immersive the case, because patient will close their eye with some kind of 
the HME system or tolerance, it is a patient feeling a little something, uh, something discomfort. So I usually prefer the open system for the two working to get the rehab together with his friend, family, it would be more convenient for following our the rehab protocols. So you are right. The Holorens is quite good the instrument for produce lots of augmented reality. But in a certain time, they are need to, they are the, the shifting to half uh, semi immersive, half is closed, and here is open, so they can the enjoy closed and open system. Yes. So yes, so we we have a lots of idea for together with you, David and John yeah. and us. Then yeah. we can spread our idea all together. Yes. Okay, okay, let's do that. Well, okay. Doc, uh, I thank you very much for your time, and thanks, David, for coming uh, at the last minute. And uh, we, we are certainly open to any, ho hope we have uh, further discussions about more presentations, because it seems to be a booming field. <laughs> so uh, I'll stop recording right now, but you can stay here. Okay. Bye-bye, okay. thank you.